1915, the year my grandparents were born, one and a half million Armenians were systematically killed by the ruling nationalist regime of the Young Turks. The world has never held Ottoman Turkey to account for this attempt to exterminate my people. And to this day, the Turkish government denies that this genocide ever happened. When I was growing up, I was sure that my father was going to convince Turkey to recognize the genocide. <laughs> At the age of six, I had already given him away to the cause. The community meetings bothered my mother more than they bothered me. I just wanted to become a singer, an actress. I was born to be a star. But it was clear from early on that I had to be an Armenian star and that my sister and I would have to marry only Armenians. <laughs> my dad was totally obsessed with his national identity. The pressure was on and I had to resist. At the age of 17, I met a non-Armenian boy. When he called my house the first time, my dad told me he should never call our house again. I was not allowed to give out my number to odars, which means strangers. I realized then that being Armenian was much more than being myself. For the past four years, I've put my personal life aside to make this film and show the world where my father's obsession comes from. Because I believe that everything that happens in my life, even now, goes back to 1915. today is we're going to my house and we're asking questions to my parents about their national obsession, the importance of the language. I've never really faced my parents with these questions. I've always tried to avoid this issue of mixed marriages and you know, Armenians dating non-Armenians and getting married to non-Armenians. Astvad's head is, which means may God be with me. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Yes, Michelle, you must. Chemas katsadzvor. 
problemul unii ca scandalul vor gârnați megume hedă la l, vor hai ce, pați nu încăi zoravoră la mecet adhavatcă. Vor desi se runte șarunac vii. Vedcă vor, aimbesmă îl la vor, ha ciort e goh se runtnă l. Garena lezum bahel, garena mușaguită bahel, garena... Ok, oina, vera în ev gari în nai, iar gu knal o dar am sunt în nere gu kan, du nu mi-ai în harengu hos în ima. Aio, s-o voru ciu mă tarțadze, păi ți se-l ce vor amen knal adangă? Nu, păi ți se-l ce al vor, înc nu ciu nu-ți că gor să-n țineți să-i te o dar i-e des. Ei, ai simt că era gândit am mers, ai simt că am mers hartz ma ce vor. O dată el am usnanas, gâm ce am usnanas. Hartz ane vor hi ma menk scăgan pa morning, chintir morning mer arceva. Ai să găsmăm că am jenat chumne. The recognition of the 1915 Armenian genocide. I've been carrying the weight of Turkey's denial in my school bag since my childhood. At the age of eight, I already knew that this drawing represented a dying mother teaching her child the Armenian alphabet. These were all calendars that decorated our walls every year to remind us that we still existed as a nation. I knew that I was one of the three million Armenians living outside our lands and that we once had a very rich history there, where my ancestors had left all our dreams. What <laughs> Եթե մեր ժողովուրդը իր հողին վրա շահանակեր ապրիլ, ինչպես աշխարի բոլոր ժողովուրդները, այսօր Հայաստանը պիտի ըլար աշխարի ամեն են հարաճատած եգիններ են մեկը, կանի որ ժառանքորդն էր մեծ կաղաքագրությամը, սակայն ժողովուրդը Almost 20 years before the genocide, the government of the Ottoman Empire began committing atrocities against the Armenians. From 1894 to 96 alone, it is estimated that 300,000 Armenians were massacred or perished in the destruction of their villages. Consequently, about 100,000 Armenian citizens fled abroad. Some, like my father's grandparents, were to emigrate to Egypt to secure a safer future. Մեծ հայրս եւ մեծ մայրս երկու քնալ վերաբրած էին երկու եղերն։ Այսինքն դեսած էին 1895-96-ի ճարտերը եւ հետո ուրեմն իրենց կյանքի մեջ 1915-ը մեծ այսպես զանր իրողություն մի եղածեր իրենք թուրսն էին երկու քնալ այդ տվականին եգիպտոսին եւ կամուստանային այն բահում որ հայերը թուրքիա մեջ արեմտա հայաստանի մեջ չարտի գենթարգվեին The spiritual leader of all Sunni Muslims declared a holy war on the 14th of November 1914 which gave permission to label Christian citizens Armenians Greeks and Assyrians enemies of the Ottoman Empire in 1915, when my great-grandparents were starting a new life, a group of nationalist young Turks implemented a plan to exterminate the Armenian population of the empire. World War I screened out the genocide from the eyes of the world. Abrile, եւ իբր հայ ապրիլը շատ մեծ գարեվոր հարց մներ ուրեմն ադոր արդյունքն է իրենց մայրիկին վրա ունեցած աստերության արդյունքն է այս սկացումներում փոխանցումը ինձի ինձ մե ցեզի եւ շարունակապար Դ 
Dad was born and raised in Egypt, where there was a big concentration of Armenians. As they were far from their lands, his mother taught him that he should never forget his identity. She named him Vresh Armen, which means the revenge of Armenians. Since the Turks had killed 250 Armenian intellectuals on April 24, 1915, then Dad had to become a writer himself and write about the survival of the nation. As a child, I really believed that he was trying to cover the losses of the genocide. Looking at my grandmother, I knew that Dad was affected by her attitude. My rigo, Maman, Mist Norabe Berkeradzer. Nüt Arnelov, Ir Gyanken, Mer Gyanken, Ir Zanotneru Gyanken, Yev and Tarabes, Nabada Gavorein, Krasner. I think in Guzer Zuitstal, Hayun Arjek, Zuitstal, Hayun Vera Brumigaro, Tuna, Paruagan Arjanikner, Naman Paneruner, I think. Madaseverumnerunerjev, <gülüyor> 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 If grandma was a chauvinist, then my father wasn't too far from being one too. For who else would test a mic by naming the colors of his flag? My father was not able to take life easily. He put huge pressure on us to speak our language and decorated our walls with the Armenian alphabet. I always had a love-hate relationship with my language, considering that he would spend most of his free time writing or helping found the Surpagop Armenian School of Montreal. I attended this school from kindergarten to high school. My mom was the principal of the kindergarten for 20 years. Orma Baron Hagopa Tabrotsa Savin Zivor Babachilarne as Tabrotsa Cherillar Gam Ankain Chunk Tapaze Baban Voras Tabrotsa Guzem Hosis Tabrotsin Garevorcham Masin Yev Vorkan Tun and Pikea Razir Arachin Orere Mecha, like Tabagan Nero Betkeki Dosensk Silbat Mushuna Mer Megnumi Orere Nain Yev Kishtaidorerun <gülüyor> استعداد یه فردوسی بازک پاگل، اینچ پس کس کس، از افدراس، گاریوارو، اورواری تاک، هایگان و جرمان و پناک، اسیگان سب اگان چی دو، نرود، اگان چی دو ره سب، یه 
این موار گرد از کنده عشقه ده بر تبراتون It was the first time I was hearing this story, and I had a feeling that I was the first person to ask him this question. It was as if he was trying to rebuild what he had lost in Egypt, and was trying to make me live in his nest. When I graduated from high school and attended a French college, I realized that I'd been living in a ghetto. Even if one third of my school friends came from mixed marriages, and were able to keep their Armenian-ness. My father still feared that I'd meet a non-Armenian in this new world. Yes, I'm a Chunim boyfriend, but I'm not going to be a good one. I'm 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 going to be a good one. Okay. Four years ago, I moved out of our house. Yes, at the age of 27, I was still living with my parents. I wanted to discover who I really was and let the future in without having to deal with my parents' pressure. But all the roads were leading me back to the past. I decided to make a film to transfer our collective memory to the next generation. I left Montreal a week ago. I'm doing this project, interviewing the last survivors of the Armenian Genocide. And I just had seven interviews in Boston and I'm going to New York. It was as if I didn't want to disappoint my parents and show them that no matter what life I chose, I would not forget my roots. Also, this job doing it will be a, a video. Yeah. Oh, I, thought, I don't think I'll ever see it. We'll see, maybe. Don't say that. Well. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Uh, stop for a while. How do we do that? Okay, just stop if you have to. I stop. Okay. So when I stop, you know that uh, I want some rest. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you a lot of questions. I want to know what you want to know, honey. Okay, look, just bring me all the way to the day you were deported. If you were deported. And when you're talking about the deportation, mention if some of the family members were lost during the genocide. Mm. Those memories are very, very deep in my experience. And sometimes I have to deliberately think of other things. Uh, or get a little dish of ice cream or go see a movie. So I'm not bothered by these thoughts. Sometimes I sit down at my desk and cry. You know why? I have my picture of father. Bring my picture and look at him. And I said, I did not know him. It was a big, big thing to me that I should have seen my father. I didn't. My dear, you are not a child anymore. Any child going through a calamity like that is not a child. This was the last time these survivors would share their memories. I was lucky to have their voices and faces on tapes, which would later become precious to me. I started carrying a new responsibility. When a government decides to exterminate a minority group. They identify that group in various ways, and they dehumanize that group. The Turks call the Armenians gavurs, infidels, or dogs. We were subversive, we were dogs, we were infidels. We weren't human beings. The deportations 
were the form of segregation of the Armenians. They went around again saying, pick up what you can, take what you can carry. If you have a horse, a wagon, pack whatever you can and go. So my grandmother took my hand. My mother had my brother's hand. My brother was two and a half years old. We started walking. We went from Horsara or Sivas to Aleppo. At the age of five, I walked all that distance. If somebody sees me, I tell him myself my story. Lost my parents. And you don't accept that this is not a deportation. What is, what was it? for all the years to come, that little girl in the blue jacket would be a supporter of the cause. Vorkan Turkio Centunila Kuantit Vora Gaste. Gaste, which is Gaste Vore Mekayu. Vra, ani masovor, polor sal, guzeng terme, cer pazad vil, as verken, at verke patske menagor, chuspian agor. Every April 24, I would watch groups of Armenian men enter the Turkish embassy in Ottawa, and expect the ambassador to open one of the windows of the second floor wave his hands and shout, yes, we recognize it. My friends and I were put in school buses every year after days and days of preparing banners and spray painting words like justice, Turks, genocide, massacre, and a number that would haunt me for the rest of my life. The lands that we demanded were lost to the Turkic invaders 1,000 years ago. As my father was an architect, he used to draw beautiful maps and explain to me what Armenia had been and what the country looks like today. He would tell me that the Armenians who were deported and massacred were from those lost lands. And that's why we would shout, Eastern Turkey is Western Armenia. Anak metsadzeink vor betke yet hogerni sertank hogerni skuzeink tadga boratsadzeink amen abril sanchorsi yete semai sor ba betke turkia ertas inchu cheri ertar nuinis desnalu chader katsadzen yes chem katsadz tereves mich vakh miegadze mechus vor at gomer ertal mek gomen gerna vdan energiatsnel inzi amar mich gomen gerna skatsagan մեծ հարցերը ստեղծել մեջս եւ չեմ կացած բայց կա ի՞նչ են տարածներ շատ էր կացին եւ գերտան եւ բիդերտան եւ գարեւորը որ երտան Claiming a land that I had never seen was too absurd In spite of my own fear I needed to go to Turkey to find out if all I had shouted for in demos had any personal meaning for me. 
I wanted to see who the Turks are today and who we were fighting against. We have to meet here at the front of that door at 10 15. I wondered how a Turkish tour guide would present the history of Eastern Turkey, only just recently opened up to organize tours. Believe it or not, the tour was called the Unknown Turkey, and yet it was the part of the country where most of the two and a half million Armenians lived 90 years ago. You want to be in the picture? I could press the button. I've already pressed it. Oh, you're already <laughs> on? I'm in, on video. Oh my God, just don't fall on me. The guide knew I was Armenian, but he thought I was there to see the beauty of our land, not to look for traces of its history. How many Armenians lived in Eastern Turkey? Lived or live? No, lived before the genocide. Oh. The word genocide, unfortunately, was done both ways. So when you say genocide, it really has to be said mutual. The Armenians, the youth, got into Russian uniform and they started a policy of displacing the Kurds and the Turks by killing or encouraging to move away. They figured the lands would be cleared of the Muslims. The Ottoman Empire, they started to think about protecting their backs because their own citizens had gone against them in the middle of a war. So they started a policy which I don't agree with, it's a terrible policy because many of the Armenians were not fighting the Turks or were not killing anyone or had not killed anyone, but they were collected and forced into forced marches into Syria and their lands were taken by landlords, Muslim. His words left me speechless. How could the Turkish version of history so distort the facts? My survivors remembered clearly how the Armenian male population had no means of displacing or killing their Muslim neighbors. Their own fathers had been disarmed, used as forced labor by the Turkish army, or imprisoned and systematically killed, leaving their wives and children behind to be sent into the desert to die. What shocked me the most is that the tourists who knew nothing about the genocide were getting this introduction to it. I would have liked them to hear the voices of my survivors. When we went the Arabian desert, that's the worst thing that started. Yeah. Because we see so many people got killed and they make us the walk among the people that they're dead already. And they tell us we're gonna die like them. Sickness, hunger, and lice. It was an awful thing because there was no water to keep clean or to wash or to even drink. One thing I remember that my mother uh, there was some mud from the rain waters, and she squeezed that in a handkerchief as I sucked it so that I could have some liquid in my system. And this would be Sebil. Sebil means free water, for giving water was a deed for God. You never denied water even to your enemy or your worst enemy, as Larry said. I suddenly remembered these images and wondered what my survivors would have felt if they had heard those words. How could he have said that, knowing I was Armenian? There was four soldiers. One was the king. He went among the people. All of a sudden we saw it. She, he held a, one young woman. She was a pregnant. I was standing there, you know, with my mother, you know, and 
all of a sudden he tear the girl's dress, cut the stomach, and pull the baby out. Oh. That I never forget. I, I see so many things, but that was a, pull the baby out. Baby scream. The woman she done, couple ladies, they fainted. Then baby cry. So he chopped the head. So he don't want to hear it. But the other soldiers, they had the machine gun on us. If anybody move, we're going to kill every one of you. So who could move? You know, they have machine guns and think, who's going to move? Anyway, he got the baby. He hold the baby's leg and started chopping the baby, as if he's chopping a vegetable. That's the one thing, you know, I never forget. A lot of time, you know, even I, I just see it. Eighty-some years, it's passed already. What's your attitude towards the Turks? Do you hate them now? Well, of course I do for what they did. No, I don't hate the Turks. Because, uh, first of all, hatred. Uh, it's like putting poison in your own psyche. Uh, you don't, if you hate a Turk, you don't hurt a Turk, you hurt yourself. In order to, to say yes or no, I have to see the person, to see what he thinks, if he feels sorry, if he accepts. If he accepts and he feels sorry, well, I have to forgive him. But if he doesn't accept, well, he is the same Turk that. We Armenians must learn that there are good Turks. And many Armenians will testify that the Turks helped them survive. The righteous Turk, you see. Uh, unless we break through the walls of hatred uh, and uh, practice inclusive love, uh, the question of genocide is never going to be resolved. I wanted to go to the extreme of what was not allowed. Could I be friends with a Turk of my own generation? I wanted to see for myself without being forced to hate or love. Hi, Arabs. Hi, Armenia. He knew nothing about the Armenian genocide. When I left him, I asked him to read about it online. I thought I had the power to open his mind. I hoped he would have the courage to see my truth. But two weeks later, he sent me an email asking me to forget about the history of the genocide and start my own history with him. for life, the Muslim lives or the Armenian lives. Maybe you learn from history, but we don't. I think the Armenians who, whose lands were lost should definitely be uh, paid, or their grand-grandkids should be paid 
somehow, some way. But I wonder if it'll ever happen. I wonder if it will ever happen. A question we've always asked ourselves and that we still ask. I stood there in front of Mount Ararat, a symbol of the lost lands of the Armenians. On the other side of the border, in Armenia, a striking memorial commemorates the genocide. Where do I belong? Do I belong in Armenia, in Canada, or Turkey? Having reached Eastern Turkey, I asked myself why I needed to be attached to this land. How could I reconnect to something I had never seen before? My parents had tried to establish that connection by naming me after this river, which I was seeing for the first time. They had named me Araz. What was I supposed to feel there when I had grown up with Canada's four seasons all my life? Was I supposed to look for another part of me there? My tour guide knew Armenian music and loved it. The songs he was playing were bringing me closer to my past. How had all this life disappeared? The faces of those who had once lived on this land and danced to this music were slowly coming back to me. To search for traces of them, I decided to leave the group more and more for the rest of the trip. When the group left the hotel, I would take off on my own looking for people who had Armenian blood. I would go around asking where there were Armenian churches. I wanted to be left alone in the destruction to understand my father. The only place of refuge that the Armenians had were churches. And in that church were some 2,000 Armenians, men, women, and children. 
and the Turks surrounded the church and poured kerosene all around and set it on fire. With the decline of Arab influence in the region, Diyarbakir became a Seljuk, <laughs> then a Turkoman, and finally an Ottoman stronghold. In 1925, after the new Republican government had dashed Kurdish hopes of autonomy, a rebellion erupted in the area of Diyarbakir. Over the next few years, the lives of between 40,000 and a quarter of a million Kurdish villagers are thought to have been taken in reprisals. Now that's a lot of book. This book is misinformation and this book sucks. Really does. Would you like to hear the, the current history of the town? No, not from this book. I'll give you another book. Where's my other book? As the trip went on, I stopped asking questions about Armenians. But an American tourist to whom I had introduced the genocide took over. Will you be telling us something about Bitlis before we get there? Famous for its honey. It's got a fortress. It's got famous songs, and that's all. And most of the people here were, what, Kurdish or? Yeah, everybody today, yesterday, tomorrow are Kurdish people. And what about before the war? Before the war, it was... Before World War One, I, I mean. It was all Armenian and we killed them all. Is that what you want me no, to No, I don't, I didn't want to hear that, but okay, that... Okay, so what would you like to know? Well, it was mixed with people all over the place. They lived Greeks with the Turks, Armenians with the Turks, Armenians with the Greeks, until the Russians came and started killing everybody. And unfortunately, some people joined them in the middle of the war, and that led to more confusing, difficult situations with many, many people suffering from it. That's all there is to it. What are those things in the water? Are those people? Those are people. One of the unique things about this lake is that you can wash your clothes without soap. Really? And they'll turn white. Groom Kedugnas Depmerergi Asfat sire simta nukat barevdar. This is an Armenian village which called seven churches. And this area was very important for the Armenians as a religion part. And there, there are a lot of churches on this mountain. Are you Armenian? My grandmother. She's Armenian. And what happened to her? They killed all her family and my grandfather saved her. Then they got married. She was telling me about all the stories that how they killed her father and mother. It's nearly 100 years, nobody knows where they are. And what happened here? They killed all the Armenians and they destroyed their village. Then after Kurdish people now living in those villages. And how are the Kurds treated here? The Kurds treated the same as the Armenians. They don't live in good conditions. They destroyed Kurdish villages and they kill Kurdish people because they want their cultural rights and their language and their human rights. In 15 years, they killed nearly 30, 40,000 Kurdish people and destroyed nearly 5,000 Kurdish villages. How do they kill? Do you know anything about Armenian culture? Do you speak the language? No, I can't. Can you read Armenian? No. Do you feel bad about that? Yeah, I feel bad because there is no document, there is no books, or there is, they don't left any books or anything about the history, just only the stupid history that Armenians start to kill Turks and then after Turks had to defend themselves. So this kind of story. I had always understood that destroying a minority language and culture is called forced assimilation. 
this young guy's story was a perfect example of what a genocide does to the survivors who are forced to convert to stay alive. As I started teaching him Armenian words and repeating them 10,000 times, I suddenly heard my father's voice when I was one year old. I started understanding my father's obsession. Aras, Inchas, As, As, Inchin, As, As, Inchin, As, Inchin. My father had no control over the forced assimilations of 1915, but was always aware that there was yet another danger. Dad believes that mixed marriages are an open door to getting assimilated naturally. His worst fear has always been to see me and my sister tying the knot with a non-Armenian. Dad fears that our children would only carry on the dominant language and culture, which would no longer be the Armenian he tried so hard to preserve. I My dad's efforts and absence from home were incomprehensible to me. It is only later on that I realized that for him, his dedication to our community was the best thing he could do as a father and was his way of loving us. <laughs> Can you hear that? I just generally no nisk. Even as I'm Iragan Bardakan, Tunerus, yes, create yajam. Mer hava kagan ashkadan tunerus mechnei. I spese chakira. Deskasi mechderen. Bas dik sheragi horizonagan. Looking at the children today. I know that his commitment played an important role in the preservation of the Armenian culture in Montreal. Without this school, the present generation would have been a step closer to dad's spheres. I know that I already carry the burden, but I cannot carry the weight of this obsession the way my father did. Yes. 
I wonder if the recognition of the genocide by Turkey would help us all live a more natural life, help us cease to feel like victims. But how natural could life be when you can't go out of your community to choose who you may love? Can I find the freedom to create my own personal life? Or do I sacrifice myself to my parents' dreams? I will find my path to preserve the memory of my survivors. And by making this film, I feel useful to my community. But even then, my father's obsession crushes me, drains me. Is this obsession the only way for Armenians to survive? Is it what we need to keep our schools and our language? One thing is clear. In spite of the genocide, I want to be Armenian and free. Yeah.